This is the ultimate overview on penile anatomy. I will give you a glimpse of how I, as a medical professional, look at the penis. This video will cover it all. Muscles, arteries, veins, nerves and bone. Wait a minute, there is no bone inside the penis? But why does it become stiff then? Because there is something different inside the penis that's causing it to become firm. In this video, I will reveal what it is and how it works. Hi, my name is Dr. Stefan Buntrock. I'm a board certified urologist and specialist in sexual health. I'm specialized in functional diseases of the penis. During my professional career, I have seen more penises than any porn star. Right now, it's over 30,000 penises and counting. And this is my 143rd video on the penis here on Euro Channel. So follow me on a tour inside one of the most fascinating organs of the human body. A big thank you to Canop for providing me with high quality medical illustrations. If you are interested in anatomy, check out their YouTube channel. I will link it in the description. The penis consists of three corpora containing erectile tissue. The two corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum. If we just look at the ones that primarily make the penis rise, it's the corpora cavernosa. The corpus spongiosum likewise erects and especially the tip of it, which is the tip of the penis and has a name of its own, the glands. When the glands does not become erect, it causes problems with penile stability. We call that soft glands or cold gland syndrome. So what is erectile tissue? It's made of muscle. But wait a minute, it's a special kind of muscle. Don't expect to take your penis to the gym and train that muscle like you would train your biceps. Penile corporal muscle is smooth muscle. The biceps muscle is skeletal muscle. They even look different. Smooth muscle works differently and can't be contracted by willpower. Here's a fun fact. When the penis is at rest, the smooth muscle is maximally contracted. You wouldn't have expected that, would you? Erection happens when smooth muscle relaxes, because now it enables the inflow of blood. So why is the corpus spongiosum less rigid? Because it lacks an important structure. This structure is called the tunica albogenia. Albus means white and this layer of tight tissue is of whitish color and is wrapped around the corpora cavernosa. The tunica albogenia is enormously important because it forms part of the penile bone I referred to earlier. As I said, humans have no bone inside the penis. They have a skeleton, the so-called fibroskeleton. Before I explain the fibroskeleton, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to Euro Channel. It doesn't cost you any money, it's just two tiny clicks. Look at it as a sign of appreciation for the time and effort I put into creating this video. Liking and subscribing is like clapping your hands. It doesn't hurt anybody, but it rewards me for my work. Thank you. The fibroskeleton of the penis is a soft yet firm structure with pillars and a kind of wall in between the two corpora to support the penis. Penile hardness is the result of the corpora cavernosa filling with blood and the fibroskeleton withstanding that pressure. Inflow of blood starts with a nerve sending a signal to the smooth muscle of the corpora. They start to relax and blood travels at high speed and volume into the penis. The most important blood vessel for this is an artery. It's the so-called internal iliac artery that eventually branches off into the pudendal artery that has another branch which is the penile artery. That's a very small one. It has a diameter of only one to two millimeters. The inflowing blood reaches velocities of 50 centimeters per second and more. The pelvic floor muscles help to trap the blood inside the penis. The most important ones are muscles directly attached to the body of the penis. These are the bulbus spongiosus and ischiocavernosus muscles. However, most important for keeping the blood inside the penis is the tunica albogenia because it locks the penile veins. Generally, arteries are for inflow of blood, veins are for outflow. The penile veins travel underneath the tunica albogenia. When the pressure inside the corpora rises, 
the veins become flattened against the tunica albuginea and close off. So erection is a hydraulic process. Increasing pressure and the fibroskeleton provide the framework for a hard and firm penis at erection. Now I would like to draw your attention to some hidden parts of the penis. It's gotta have some kind of root, right? So the corpora cavernosa extend into the body and spread to the left and right. This part of the penis is called the crura. That's plural. Singular is crus. So it's one crus, two crura. On top, the corpora cavernosa are anchored to the pubic bone by a firm structure called the suspensory ligament of the penis. The corpus spongiosum extends into the bulb of the penis. The urethra runs inside the corpus spongiosum. Now let's briefly discuss the foreskin. It is a fascinating structure and much more than a piece of skin. It has a function. Until 1996, the foreskin, also known as the prepuce, was underappreciated in medicine, but we've since gained a deeper understanding of its function. It is held in place by a small string called the frenulum. When you retract it, it will eventually roll back because of that frenulum and because there is also some muscle inside the foreskin. The foreskin provides mechanic protection to the glands, but it is also very important for penile sensitivity. The glands itself only records pressure. The rest more or less happens within the prepuce and frenulum. Here we have myriads of nerve endings that are responsible for penile sensitivity. If you do a circumcision, it may cause decreased penile sensitivity and reduced sexual function. However, also increased sexual function has been reported in the literature. Personally, I have a tendency to leave it and not recommend circumcision unless there are absolute reasons to do so. And I can assure you that there are circumstances where you have no choice. It's pretty much the same in all of medicine. Sometimes you are left with no choice but extract the tooth, amputate a leg, remove some intestine. What could be a possible reason for foreskin removal? Typically BXO, Bellonitis, Xerotica, Obliterans, also known as lichen sclerosis. It is a chronic progressive inflammatory disease of the prepuce. It has to be stopped before it causes problems with scarring of the urethral opening, for example. Before this video ends, it's crucial for you to know the main supply lines. There is a bundle containing a major artery, vein and nerve running together on the back of the penis. This is a very delicate structure and if it gets damaged, the penis will lose a lot of its function. This power line has a name of its own, the neurovascular bundle. The neurovascular bundle is well protected because there are several layers of tissue covering up that structure. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into penile anatomy and want to watch more content on this fascinating organ, check out my playlist with the remaining 142 videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.